guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I plan for the homeschool year. The way I'm doing it in this video is honestly the best way I've found. It's very thorough and doing a lot of work up front makes your whole year go a lot easier. So first I start with a calendar. So I just googled a school year calendar and there's lots of free ones online. You don't need anything fancy. This is from papertraildesign.com. It was free. I started by marking my start date and our end date for school. And then I marked all the holidays that we have. So we are in a distance learning program, which pays for homeschool. So we are going off of that program's calendar. This year they're having half days at the end of some breaks for some reason. So that's what these squares are. I don't know why they are doing that. It's so weird. Now in Washington, there are about 11 subjects they have to teach. Occupational education, which is basically what jobs are available to you in different jobs in the community, things like that. Science, math, language, social studies, history, health, reading, writing, spelling, and then a development of an appreciation of art and music. So you're going to want to find out what subjects your state requires before you start planning your gear. You can find it on this website here. They have links to everything you need for each state. It's really handy. The next thing you're going to need is a spiral bound notebook. Now I just get a different color for every year. It just helps organize it. I do apologize. I have horrible handwriting. So I mark what it is, the years, and then the grades I have. Now the first page you're going to do is a brain dump. And I tore this out just to make it easier for flipping back and forth. So you're just going to start with the subjects that you know you have to teach and then anything else you want to teach. Additional things I have are architecture, cooking class, sewing class, Spanish, dance, Tuttle Twins, computer programming, Latin, singing lessons, things like that. So those are not specifically required by my state, of course, but there are things I want to include in our curriculum. So then I have a table of contents. I'm pretty sure I have ADD because I just have to work on the thing I want to work on. Otherwise, it's really hard to get started. So I just went by whatever I wanted to work on that at that time. So they're not alphabetical order or anything, but you could be more organized than I am. So here's subjects and then things like supplies and a wish list type things and then lesson plans. I'm not done planning for this year yet. So then you're going to number all the pages that you'll use in your notebook. I usually just do like 40 or so, and then once I get to that, then finish it. So I don't waste time numbering all of them. Okay, so for science, it's kind of like a brain dump. I have my main science curriculum we're using this year, and then I have different ideas to supplement that. We're doing physics this year. Mystery science, they have some lessons on there that correspond to physics, so that's why that's on there. These are ideas for subscription boxes, Kiwi Crate, Eureka Crate, Milk Crate, Bits Box, Emi, uh, Science Max, Magic School Bus, Bill Nye, well, Emi again, Library Books, just all the things that could help with physics. I really like to supplement any curriculum I get, no matter how good it is, so <laughs> that's why there's all these extra things. And then I like to have my kids watch a half hour of usually a science video during lunch because it helps them to stay calm and not be all silly and take forever for lunch. And then it helps them learn as well. I like to approach subjects by different ways of learning the same material. So like a book or video, things like that. Here's the brain dump of everything I could think of that I want to include with science. And then I just picked whatever ones I wanted to work on at that time and did it. So mystery science, I went on there and found all of the ones that are physics related and have it by grade. So kindergarten first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And then all the mini lessons that would also apply for that. These are only about five minutes long, five to 10 minutes. So they really don't take up any time at all. And these continued and then magic school bus episodes and magic school bus rides again, again, ones that pertain to physics. Now science max is mostly physics, but he does have some chemistry in there. So I just put all of his episodes listed on here. And once our science program comes, I'll look through there. The lessons are all taught online, but there's physical stuff that comes with it. So once those come, I will find the table of contents and find episodes that kind of go with that and have them that week just to help the learning really soak into the brains. And Bill Nye episodes and where I could find them. And then different library books that I found that have to do with physics. And then possible books to get from our distance learning program. And here are the prices of the different subscription crates. And then extra physics kits from Amazon I might get. I didn't order any of these yet. 
maybe second semester, and then different tops for the six books if we wanted to go even deeper. Okay, for history, we were doing Story of the World. We were going to do it last year, but we only got a few lessons in. Now, I don't plan Story of the World out so much in depth. What I do instead is I go through the whole book, and I just go on the library website, and I check every book to see if they have it there. This really helps speed up planning for each week when I get there. I could just go and make a list of books I'm going to be using for that month, and then I just check them all out at one time, or reserve them all at one time, and then I'm good to go for that month. Now my library used to have a way where you could request books, but they wouldn't start until the date you specified. So if I wanted books in three months, I could say, okay, I want to check these books out and have that start date for the request. They changed their website though, so I'm not sure if you can still do that, but I did make a list of books that they have from here. So obviously not all books will work for my kids because of ages or maybe the book's not that good or whatever, but everything they have, I'll check out, preview it, and then plan from there. And then I also go through here and I find ones that are on YouTube read alouds. They do have chapter books on YouTube as well, but I just got like the picture books. There's not a ton of picture books in here because it is the fourth one. And then I will go through and pick projects for each chapter, which I have not done yet. So here's all the other things I'm thinking of for history. Picture books around the world part two, and then the map, maps that go with that. We're going to be doing trick geography, which is a six week program, I think, and it helps you learn all the states and capitals and things like that. I got the Charlotte Mason geography book and the geography book The Well-Trained Mind recommends. And I also have the Draw Mexico, Draw Central and South America, and I think Draw Europe books this year that I checked out from our program. So there's just ideas to use. I'll probably use most of these, if not all. And then here's my wish list for Critical Thinking Company. I always get a lot of books from them, but obviously we can't use all these books one semester. So some have to buy a second semester or maybe I'll get them next year or change my mind on them, but this is what I want to use for the next year, year and a half. For math, I have what my, each of my kids are doing. So we're doing Matthew C's, our main curriculum. We also like to use Miquan and Critical Thinking Company books. And this year I got Beast Academy as a supplement, so I'll just have my oldest two do it maybe two or three days a week. Here's all the writing type things. So Grammar Galaxy, Kilgallen Sentence Helps. Standard Blizzard handwriting. These are all supplementary kind of things except for the handwriting. Now Grammar Galaxy, we are using Essentials in Writing, which has a lot of grammar the first half of the year, but I thought this looked really fun to try. So we'll just double up on grammar. This doesn't look very challenging for the first level. I don't think it will take too much time. Language Arts, we've got Language Smarts. This is from the Critical Thinking Company again. Thinking Skills, Reading Detective, things like that. Essentials in Writing, which is a writing program. And then Ambleside. So Ambleside Online is a Charlotte Mason curriculum. It's free. They have book lists and things like that. So you have to buy the books yourself, but they also have links to all the places you can get it for free. So I just have ones on here that I'm going to try and incorporate either into read alouds or audiobooks. So for literature, this, this is kind of like a rough draft. I should have had more pages for this, but I didn't. So I'll have to finish this at the end of the book. I got the Roald Dahl collection and What is America set from our program. And I reserved these, but they didn't come in, so I probably won't get these three this year. I was starting the books I wanted him to read, but then I realized they did not have enough room. So my daughter's working reading skills still, and my middle son, I thought he was on a first grade level, and he just started reading Harry Potter to me, so that was quite the relief. So I have to rethink what I was going to do for him for reading this year. And then audiobooks, we do a lot of driving. They have a violin class. It's about 30 minutes away, and then we do a PE class, which is 20 minutes each way. So we have an hour and 40 minutes in the car each week minimum. So we do a lot of audiobooks. For music this year, we're doing piano. Um, all my kids will be in that. We were doing Simply Piano and Hoffman Piano this last year, but we're going to drop Simply Piano this year because my kids never wanted to do the lessons. They just wanted to practice their popular songs on there, which is fine. And great for sight reading, they'd practice for 30 minutes a day. It was awesome. But they need to do lessons. So we're going to go back to Hoffman and just Hoffman. And then maybe once they get back in the habit of doing lessons, we can reintroduce this. They really work really beautifully together. Violin, my two oldest boys are taking it. And possibly me, depending on if my mom can watch my youngest, because he's only two. My mom bought his ukulele. She found it at Goodwill. So we have ukulele lessons through Prodigy's music that we do. So we could 
learn it, but I don't know if I'll make that as part of the schedule. Okay, so for music over here, we have Singing Made Easy, Prodigy Bells. This is such a great program for soulfish and ear training and things like that. I got this rock song history book. I'll show you later in the video on how I scheduled it out. So we're not doing composer study this year. We're doing modern music instead. Now, Ambleside Online that I mentioned earlier has folk songs, and so I just pick 10 and we'll do one folk song a month and try and learn it. And then I was thinking we could put them on a playlist and then just play it when we clean and stuff so they could really learn it. Because I felt like last year the songs were great, but we'd only learn it kind of like singing with the song and with the music. And so I would like to actually have it more memorized. So hoping if we could just always listen to it when we clean, it might help as well. And I have morning menu ideas. I probably won't actually get a menu per se. I think one of those little folders with the three brads would be easier to put stuff in and out of. For art this year, we're doing home art studio. I got two levels of that. We also have Atelier level four, which I got at a, a thrift store. So I don't know that we'll have time for that this year since we're doing this one and hopefully draw 3D. There's some art supplies. And then my daughter's going to be doing ballet this year. Okay, so artists by term. So it's three artists a year. So Mary Cassatt, John Williams, Waterhouse, Norman Rockwell. I love Waterhouse. He's one of my favorites. I was trying to find books that would go with them, but I only found stuff from Mary Cassatt. I like the Charlotte Mason method of art, but I also like to go more in depth and teach my kids more about the artist. And then foreign language. So we're doing Spanish and Latin this year. I signed up for Sarah's Spanish. It's really cool. They have different teachers on there and a lot of it is in Spanish, but they also tell you in English what they're talking about and explain it. It's done really well, and each week has a theme. One theme was Super Mario, because the movie came out, and so they have a recipe day and an art day and science project. There's usually five to six per week, and then multiple teachers teach it, so you can just follow your favorite teachers or just do it every day. We're also doing Song School Spanish. We did this two years ago, and it was fantastic, but... We just didn't end up doing it last year at all. We totally dropped the ball in Spanish, so we're just going to repeat level one. I also got flip-flop Spanish last year. I never ended up using it, so I don't know if I'll be able to fit that in since I found this one after, but we'll see. There's also an Eat Your Spanish podcast, so I was thinking I would just do it Mondays, driving to Taekwondo. This is our homeschool PE class. It's mostly like regular PE stuff, but they also have Taekwondo moves because it's a Taekwondo studio. I might just do it like one time a week in the car so kids can't escape. <laughs> and then our distance learning program is offering online Spanish classes this year as well. And then I excel Spanish. So I was going to maybe have to do that for two or three days a week as well. And then Latin, we're doing minimus Latin this time. I have not planned this out yet, so I'm not sure how long it will take each day. There's a Latin story time on YouTube, and I'm sure there's more Latin resources available. You can get the Harry Potter series in Latin which is really cool. That's my goal to learn Latin and read Harry Potter in Latin. Okay, so architecture. I planned this last year. We didn't really get to it. So there's a free program I found that goes through fifth grade. And then there's some books that we have from last year I was going to add in. There's bridges, art of construction, bridges and tunnels, canals and dams, and then architect academy and the architecture draw book from Sporn. And then computer game ideas. So reading eggs, math seeds, Nessie, Night Zookeeper, ABC Mouse, Typing, Cetera, and IXL Spanish. Now, computer programming, I got the Thames and Cosmos Kids First Coding and Robotics. There's 30 lessons in it. We also got the Recon Programmable Rover. We found some Saturday lessons for free at a community center near us. I have a Lego kit to do. I have three bits boxes, but I might order more second semester when we get more money. The money they give us is divided by semesters. And then I have some Osmore books for that. So I haven't planned this out yet either. Then I have supplies, everything I needed, where I was getting it, prices, and a little identifying number for each one so I can put my orders in and they order it for us. I have this list of things they can do independently while I read to them to keep them occupied because I have wild boys that like to wrestle. So I have modeling beeswax, modeling clay, and then using plates because we homeschool in our living room. We don't have a homeschool room. Wax craft sticks, glue and popsicle sticks. My kids love doing that. Next sand, perler beads, rainbow scratch paper, a Wilson dog gloom, Legos, wood pattern blocks, puzzles, drawing, hat looms, coloring books, equilibrio, rush hour. These are one player logic games. Dot to dot, I found some that go over a thousand. Sticker books, geoboard, 
That's a board with little spikes you can put rubber bands and different designs. Cardboard sewing, chess logic game, car logic game, laser game. Again, more one player logic games. Needle felting kit. This is my timber doodle wish list. So I ordered Qubits. I want to do the stop motion explosion next year and add stop motion video making into our curriculum. Got extreme dot to dots, create your own planet, write your own comics. My year of art is an Osborne book. So some I got, some I didn't, just kind of like a wish list. Spelling is hard for one of my sons. So I just made a list of spelling games from Amazon. I don't know if I'll get these or not. And this is my second semester Osborne wish list. I'm sure I will not get even half of these, but it's just anything that I wanted. I changed the name to paperpie.com, which I think is so weird. Why are they just saying Osborne now has educational kits? <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, Paper Pie and Osborne are the same company. All right, now here I started scheduling stuff. So this is the Home Geography for Primary Grades. It's by CC Long. It's recommended on the Amazon Online website. So here's the table of contents. Sun, stars, different features like plains, hills, mountains, valleys, things like that. And then these ones in italics are just poems. So like that whole lesson is just a poem. It's for my lessons. And so I just went through the book and read them and then just kind of made notes of how long each one would take. So I'm not going to have them do the written exercises. They can just do that verbally. But I'll do a flip through of this and later so you can see all the pages. So here I just wrote the lesson number and then the title so I can just kind of know like what it was teaching. And then these are all about 20 minutes, I think. This one will take longer. I think this one will take 40 minutes. And so I do the times with these so that when I'm actually putting in time planner, I don't schedule too much on one day. So this keeps going. And then the geography book. I also got this one. It's good for older kids. This is the one recommended in The Well-Trained Mind. I will do a flip through this one as well so you can see it. So this one is more what you'd think of when you think of a geography book. There's a lot of hands-on projects in here. So I think that'll be fun. I don't know that we'll get through this whole book and the other book. We might just do half this book or something. I'm not sure. I haven't scheduled things on my planner yet. So for this, I would write the, the title of the lesson and then what we needed, what we were doing, and I would just underline things that we needed. So as I'm planning, I can put things to get for that next week in the planner. Traveling the States is a walled up way curriculum. We started last year. It's really good. You have these little passports, so you can you can cut out the flag and tape it in once you do each state. And then they have basically the same plan for each week. It's a four day plan. And so you can just choose what to do for the extra stuff on the fourth day. This is a good program. We really liked it. We just got busy and it kind of fell to the wayside. Okay. So music library rock. It's a history of rock music. This is the only modern music study I found. Each page just has a little file of the group or person singing historical facts. And then some of them have to try this at home. They have this playlist right here. And then they have one song they highlight and they do like a little background and then they go through and talk about what's happening in each part of the song. So I thought that'd be really fun to do. For this one, I didn't plan it out like everything we're doing for each one. I just kind of did a general plan for each lesson. I already found books at the library. There was only eight or nine. So of course not everyone in here. And I found YouTube videos. Again, not everyone in here. I only found ones that are appropriate for kids. So the first day we'll read about the musician and then I find the locations mentioned on a map. This is the first song on the list. And then just a YouTube video or a new song each day, just in the morning. Read a book if you can find it, things like that. So I just made notes to how I wanted to do this. And I already found the books and the YouTube videos. I also wanted to add musicals into this year, just do one a week or every other week or one a month or whatever. So if you have musicals that you know and love that are appropriate for kids, fourth grade and under, please link them below. I would love more ideas. I have not seen a ton of musicals, although I do love them. Any ideas down below would be great. And if you could link where I could find it for free, that'd be even extra awesome. Okay, Grammar Galaxy. Again, I just kind of did an overview of how I thought the lessons should go each week. So this is really cool. It has a mission manual and you're a kid on this planet and you have to save the galaxy and they have this letter and different tasks to do. This is a student book and then the adult book or the teacher's manual, I mean. 
This is the story. This is the story, and then you get a mission. Looks really fun. So I just kind of did a little outline of how I thought each week would go. But when I'm in there planning, I'll check each activity to make sure nothing's going to take up too much time, or we'll be able to fit it all in. And that's as far as I got. I haven't finished planning the rest of the year, but let me show you the planner and how that, that goes. So I got the well-planned day planner this year. This is a page in there that they suggest making copies of to try and do a schedule. So I did write some things in here. So we have speech therapy for all three of my oldest kids. They don't have horrible speech. They just have a little bit of trouble with ours. So then my youngest will be in preschool this year. And then their online Spanish classes. Violin is what's tripping me up this year. They haven't put the schedule out for the classes yet. So I don't know if my kids are going to be back to back or in the same class or hours apart. I don't know. So I feel like I can't plan my week out. I have a whole day missing that I don't know what to plan for. So I won't know this until the end of the last week of August. So that's why I haven't filled my plan out yet. These are online classes my boys have. And my, my daughter has ballet. We have our PE class in these two time slots. But I didn't put that down yet because I just found out the schedule. So this is just kind of a general. And then I could just keep this out while I'm scheduling each week to try and make sure I don't do too many things each day. Like this day, we're not going to do a ton of stuff because we have a lot of things going on this day. But like Thursdays are wide open, so probably a longer school day. Same with Fridays. So I did a really thorough review of this planner. I'll link it below. You should definitely check it out. I'm really excited for this planner. Oh yes, I also did like a pre-fill trip, rough draft type thing. Our distance learning program provides field trips. I think they're probably at a reduced rate because they do a group buy, but we're in Western Washington, so I didn't sign up for anything in Eastern Washington because that's just too far of a drive. But there's a lot of stuff to do here that does come out of your budget for the year when you sign up for it. So let's get to September. Every month has a reading list, a read aloud list, and a library book list, and a field trip list. This is going to make planning so much easier just having it all in one place. So I'll get everything figured out in here and then just transfer it to here. So this planner has a family focus area on top. This would probably be like a morning time basket or whatever you want to use it for. We'll probably do Bible study, folk song, music stuff, art lessons, things like that. Also Ambleside Riches. So things like art study, composer study, or in this case, rock and roll study. <laughs> things like that. I'm still planning that out. Now I like this planner because it's enough room for four kids. But for example, I only use iPlanner for group stuff generally, unless it's like an individual class or something. So I can put, you know, subjects in here because I have a lot of different subjects. The bottom one I use for classes or activities. And so I'll, I'll down here, I'll put things like speech or Spanish, you know, whatever in those ones. But first, before I write anything in here, I'm going to go take this calendar. And I'm going to go through and mark off the holidays. So you don't want to plan and then have be like, oh yeah, it's a holiday. Whoops. You gotta plan everything. Now, I like to use erasable pens. They're my new favorite thing. Discovered them last year and they are just the best because I love I love writing a pen. So I just cross this out. If I want to do something later, I can just easily erase it. Not a problem. Because sometimes I don't take the holiday off. Thanksgiving I definitely do, but like Labor Day or Martin Luther King Day, just like a one random day. We don't always take those off. So I'll do that through the whole planner and then I'll take the field trip days and also mark those off as well because most field trips are usually a drive and that's going to take up most of the day if not all of the day. So I'll mark those off as well and then I'll go through and schedule it. I'm not going to make a video of me marking everything off. That'd probably be really boring for you. <laughs> so that's how I schedule my year. I hope this video was helpful to you. I know when I first started homeschooling, it's just, it was so overwhelming to know like what to do or how to do it. And I actually didn't use a planner my first two years, but this will be my third year using a planner and it's just fantastic. It makes it so much easier. And doing it this way, instead of having all the individual assignments, you don't really have to erase and move things around that much. And everything's already planned for you at the beginning of the year. So it just really streamlines your homeschool. It makes it so much easier and simple to do everything. All right, please like and subscribe and let me know if this video is helpful. I'll see you next time.